The second scenario I want to, uh, to talk about is what if you don't want to get the data from OPC to, uh, to SQL? What if you want to do the opposite? You have some data that's already being, being historized in the SQL database and SQL table, um, and you want to be able to trigger off new values getting logged and, and run some logic in the OPC router. Um, so let's call this a demo two connection. Let's do that. So in, in this connection, and let me pull up our, our database. This I've already logged some data just to kind of show you what, what I'm visualizing here. So this for this very specific scenario that I'm gonna, gonna set up here, I have some cycle states. Um, and we're, we're logging the state of our cycle and we're logging the time that that, that state change. Um, so in this scenario, a state of zero means our, our cycle has stopped. A state of one means our cycle is running. And we, we can see how long that cycle was active based on the, based on the time stamp. Um, and what I want the OPC router to do in this scenario is I wanted to calculate how long that cycle was active, how long did that cycle take, um, and then push that, that, that uh, information down to our, our OPC server. Um, let me just go ahead and order this by all right, order that make it easier. All right, perfect. And then so th this is the opposite of what we just configured. Um, so the first thing that we'll want to do is we want to read out when that cycle start it so that we can record what that cycle start timestamp is. Um, so if, if we look under our triggers here, we have uh, a database trigger. Uh, let's add that because that's going to be able to monitor our SQL table for new values. Um, and then at that point, we want to read out a, a SQL value. Um, and we need to store that value somewhere in the OPC router so that we can do some map on it. Um, so what I'm going to propose is we just create a variable just an internal variable to the OPC router to, uh, to store that cycle start time. Um, so again, these are just generic components. Um, and from here, we can, uh, let, let's start configuring this a little bit more specifically. So on our, our database trigger, um, let's open that up and set it to our, our, our instance, our SQL database. Um, we need to select the other uh, table, of course, that it should be uh, monitoring, and again, what, what columns do we want it to actually monitor for new values? Um, uh, in, in this case, I'm just gonna add all of them. So any time it detects a new ID, a new uh, state or a new timestamp, this will, uh, will trigger. Um, but I do wanna filter it. I obviously don't want this, this trigger to fire every time that a new value is logged. I only want this to fire when we get the notification that the cycle has started, because I wanna use this to record what the cycle start time is. Um, so let's add a filter. Now the field that I want to filter on is the state, um, and I want that state to be equal to one for us to know that the cycle has started. Um, down here in this preview, we can kind of see this logic. Um, and if you're familiar with SQL, um, the SQL syntax, the way this reads is select these fields where in state equals one. It's kind of how the SQL statement will, will read out. Um, and, and the way this is now configured, this trigger will only fire if a new value is logged to our SQL database, and if that state of that new value is one. Um, now, the other thing, I'm going to disable this trigger and connect. I want this to only trigger on, on new values. Um, so that's all there is. So this trigger is now going to fire any time that, that a new uh, cycle start value is logged to my uh, SQL table. Um, now, when that happens, what do I want to do? Um, let's query some data out of the, uh, the database. Um, again, set it to my SQL server instance, and I want to uh, select some data out instead. Um, I'm gonna set this to my cycle state, and the data I wanna bring out of here is the, uh, the, uh, the timestamp. Um, I'm gonna add all of them just because we're just gonna use the timestamp. But I'm going to add the same uh, same filter here. I, I only want to pull the uh, the timestamp of the value if the state is equal to one. Um, so I'm going to add this. We can see, unlike with the database trigger, I can actually access the the value of all of these, and the uh, the actual filter value is dynamic. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag a constant value in here. One. So whenever this fires, uh, we can see that this database is going to query out all of these fields where the state equal to one. Um, the other piece of this I want to do is I only want it to return one value. I want it to return the latest one. Um, so I'm going to limit the number of records this returns. Um, and I'm going to make sure that the the, the order is sorted descending based on our, uh, let's call it our ID, sure. Um, so that, what this is going to allow us to do is make sure we're only getting the latest timestamp returned to us. We're not going to get every single value queried out where uh, where this condition is true, since uh, if we go back to our SQL table, we can see there's multiple rows here, or multiple records where the state is equal to one. Uh, we only wanted to return the latest value uh, that was just inserted. Um, so with all that being said, let's uh, do okay here. Um, and now I need to actually do something with this timestamp. So let's create a variable here, create a new one, um, cycle start time. We'll give it a, we'll give it a static data, uh, data type here, date time. So the default value is fine. Um, and so now we can uh, store that timestamp in the cycle start variable. Um, so the cool thing about these variables is they can be shared between connections. So I have this one connection that all this is going to be doing is it's going to be recording a cycle start time. Um, and now I'm going to configure a second connection that's going to trigger when the cycle ends. And then it can run some logic to, uh, to basically calculate the difference between the cycle start time and the cycle end time. Um, so let's do that. Before I set this productive, let me go ahead and set up our demo two connection and cycle. And just as with the start cycle, where we're going to basically configure this uh, in a similar fashion, where we want this to trigger any time that a new value is logged that the cycle has uh, has ended. Um, we're going to need to read what that timestamp is. We'll just as with the other one, we'll want a constant value. And in this case, we're going to use a script that we'll, we'll write to, uh, to calculate the difference between those two uh, timestamps. And then the resulting duration, we're going to write to an OPC server. Um, so I've, I've worked with the product a little bit, so I, I know what components I need to add. Um, you don't have to add all these components to the workspace right at the beginning. Um, you can just add them as you go along. Um, but what we're going to do here, we're going to set up our database trigger. Um, and again, this is going to monitor that, uh, that cycle state table. We're going to monitor all fields. And because we're monitoring for when the cycle ends, uh, we're going to monitor or we're going to filter based on that state is equal to zero. Um, so this is going to trigger any time that a timestamp is logged of a cycle ending. When that happens, we want to read that timestamp out of the table. So same same thing we did with the uh, with the other connection. Let's uh, let's add these over. I'm going to add a filter where our uh, state is equal to zero. And again, we just want to read back the uh, the last timestamp. We don't we don't want to read out the last hundred records. Uh, we're just interested in the the latest one. And we're going to filter that by the ID. Um, so same deal. We now have access to all these data values. Um, the uh, state that we're actually interested in is going to be state zero, symbolizing that the, the cycle has stopped. Um, so now let's start connecting some of these items together. Um, and we're going to write this once it's been processed by our script uh, to a tag in our, uh, our server here. It's going to be tag six. So the, the last thing and arguably probably the most important thing that we now have to uh, have to do is we need to write a script that can calculate the uh, the time difference between the starting timestamp and the ending timestamp. So let's add a new script here. It's like duration. And so you can see if you're familiar with you know dot net or Visual Studio. This should look pretty familiar. Um, OPC Router has a very extensive scripting engine built in. Um, 
And we are now going to define some variables that we can push data to and pull, you pull data out of. Um, so setting, we're gonna edit parameters and we're gonna have three variables or three parameters that we're gonna work with in this script. We're having a cycle start time. Let's start. We're gonna have a cycle end time. These are going to be the variables that uh, we've read out of SQL, and now we need a duration that we're going to calculate in the script. So we've given them names, um, and the parameter direction here is going to be, are these input parameters that are being pushed into the script, or are these parameters are going to be read out of the script? Um, so you can see we're going to have two inputs and one output. Uh, we can have a parameter be both, but in this scenario, that, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, and then our uh, data types here are we have two timestamps and the duration is going to be in seconds. I'm going to do in 32 here. Um, so now we have these parameters available. Um, you can see them now in our toolbox here on the side that we can work with those uh, parameters. Um, and from here, it, it's just a matter of writing the, uh, writing the script. Um, so I know you guys don't want to necessarily see me sit here and code, but actually have this copied out to the side. Um, but you can see the general syntax is it, 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 it's .NET code. Um, so our duration variable is going to be our cycle end time. We're subtracting our cycle start time, and then we're, we're pulling out the total seconds of that duration. Um, there's a lot of error handling that I could do that I'm not doing as part of this. It is just a, a demo script. Um, but let's see if this compiles or if I uh, fat fingered anything so we can see right here at the bottom it's compiled successfully so let's save our script and do this um, and as with all the other transfer objects we can now see that we have access to the cycle start and end time or excuse me values and the duration um, so we already know the duration is going to be pushed to our opc ua server here our opc da server excuse me um, and then we are reading out the cycle end time down here so that's going to populate cycle end um, and that cycle start time, we're saving to that, that variable that we set up in our other connection here. Uh, so we actually do need one more, more object, which is our variables object. Um, and it was our cycle start time. Pull that out. And so that, that is this full connection. So compared to our in first demo where we, where we looked at uh, just logging a single tag, you can see that these connections can be pretty verbose and run some more complex logic. Um, so this has obviously has a, a scripting component where we're running a custom logic, but now we're pulling you know data points from other connections into this one. We're pulling from multiple data sources. We're pushing to multiple data sources. Um, so from here, let's set this productive and see if uh, how this works. So same thing, we, we monitor our, our staging. Um, and because we've configured new plugins, that scripting, uh, that script that we wrote, we do need to uh, to restart the service. Now this is going to push this up to the runtime engine, and then uh, and play with it a little bit and see if uh, everything works the way we hope it does. Um, so let's jump over to our state monitor, and then we're going to monitor both connections here, and we can see how uh, everything's behaving. So once these initialize, we'll we'll log some values to that SQL table. Um, let's see what happens down here. Let's insert a new value here. I'm going to drag this off screen so that I can uh, do our inserts. Um, and if I change this query and I'm going to insert a value of one, see, and I'm executing this here now. So once this picks up, we can see this just triggered and we can see that uh, the current timestamp, the UTC timestamp was logged to that, that cycle start time. Um, so now I'm going to wait a few seconds, um, and then I'm actually going to jump over here, and I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to uh, to trigger our uh, our cycle stop. Um, and what we should see is we can see that cycle start time here update, and we can see that the the cycle duration was 26 seconds. Um, so when I jumped over to this, you saw there were a bunch of ugly numbers everywhere. Um, those were because I forgot to change this database trigger not to uh, fire on uh, on startup. So that was a configuration mistake. Um, and, and that's kind of why we want that database trigger to only fire once it's detected that value. 
Um, but this is also something in the script we can add error handling. Obviously, if the values don't make sense, we can't have a negative duration or a duration that goes above a year. Uh, we can add some, some logic to the script itself. Um, so let, let's do that one more time. Let me uh, log a, a one here. Let's get our cycle started. We'll wait a few, a few seconds. And I'm going to log a zero that our cycle ended. So we should see this uh, update here. You can see that cycle lasted eight seconds. And if I, if I pull my, uh, my SQL table over here and we uh, take a look at the cycle states here, you should see that this should last at about eight seconds, which we, which we can see. If we look at the time difference here, the, the difference between these, the cycle starting and stopping was, was eight seconds. Um, I know there's a lot of configuration that was done very, very quickly here in the interest of time. Um, but the idea here being we can really get re relatively complex with these data flows. This doesn't have to be single data source to single data connection. Um, they can flow together and we can add all sorts of you know, selection logic here that, that we want. 